Hi, I'm Mason Vale from Boise State University. In this video, we're going to be introducing a special high-powered iterator for lists called List Iterator. All collections in the Java Collections API are expected to support a standard iterator, but lists in Java are also expected to support a special, more powerful version called a List Iterator. List Iterator is a descendant of iterator, so it has all of the methods defined for a standard iterator, and a list iterator instance can be assigned polymorphically to a basic iterator reference and used as a basic iterator, because a list iterator is a iterator. But in addition, a list iterator has the ability to be started at any valid index within a list. It can also move in the previous direction as well as in the next direction, and it has methods for modifying the list by inserting new elements, replacing existing elements, and removing elements both after a next call and after a previous call. The primary purpose of using a list iterator is efficient navigation and modification of a list regardless of underlying implementation. While both the ArrayList and LinkList classes in the Java Collections API support a list iterator, its benefit is best realized when working with a double linked list, where indexed methods carry big O n runtime. Because the list iterator does not lose its place in between method calls and all individual navigation, add, remove, and set method calls are constant time operations at the iterator's current position, well-written algorithms that leverage the list iterator allow efficient navigation and modification of lists. The initial search for a starting index or a target element remains a big O n process, but all individual methods thereafter are constant time. A list iterator typically has two constructors, a default constructor and an indexed constructor. The default constructor initializes a list iterator similarly to a basic iterator. It's queued up in front of the first element of the list, such that a call to next would return the first element. The indexed iterator allows you to start a list iterator at any position within the list. A call to next immediately after using this list iterator constructor would return the element at the given index. Using index 0 would be equivalent to calling the default constructor the list iterator would be queued up in front of the first element, the element at index 0. Using the size of the list as the starting index would queue up the list iterator after the last element of the list. This could be used if you intended to navigate through the list in reverse order. You can also use any index within the bounds of 0 to the size of the list. Navigation methods include the familiar has next and next from a basic iterator, and these methods work exactly the same as would be expected from a basic, a basic iterator. We also have the ability now to move in the reverse direction, however, so corresponding with has next and next, we have a has previous and previous. Has previous returns true as long as there is an element in front of the iterator's current position, and previous returns the previous element and moves the iterator back to the next in between position. Just like the next method, previous will throw a no such element exception if it's called when there is no previous element, assuming the iterator is at the beginning of the list. In addition to these methods that help us move forward and backward through the list, we also have some helpful next index and previous index methods that tell us the current position of the list iterator. Next index tells us the index of the element that would be returned next, and previous index returns the index of the element that would be returned by previous. The three list iterator modification methods are remove, set, and add. Like the remove method from a basic iterator, the remove method is described as removing the element most recently returned by the iterator. Whereas a basic iterator only had a next move, the list iterator also has a previous move. So the remove method now removes the element most recently returned by either next or previous. Like a basic iterator, two consecutive calls to remove would result in an illegal state exception. Also, a remove method cannot follow a call to add, set, or remove. So each remove method must be preceded by a call to next or previous. Likewise, the set method affects the most recently returned element. 
This would throw an illegal state exception if that set call was not preceded by a next or a previous call. Set cannot follow a call to add or remove. The add method will always work. The add method inserts the given element into the list in front of the list iterator's current position. So the element that would be returned next by the list iterator remains the element that would be returned next after a call to add. A call to previous would return the newly added element. In this slide, we'll visualize the results of calling the list iterator's indexed constructor. We've called the list iterator constructor with index 2. So the iterator, represented by a triangle, is positioned in front of the element that would be at index position 2, the letter C element. Index 0 would be in front of A, index 1 would be in front of B, so index 2 is in front of C. From this position, the iterator has never had next or previous called, so a call to remove or set would throw an illegal state exception. A call to add would be allowed, the new element would be added in front of element C and also in front of the iterator. From this position, a call to next would return the C, a call to previous would return B. Assuming we called previous from the original position, the iterator would move backward to the position between A and B and return the element B that it just passed over in the process. Now at this point, a call to set would be expected to replace element B with the new value, and a call to remove would be expected to remove B from the list, such that the iterator is now after A and before C. Here we've called remove after previous has returned element B. So element B has been removed from the list. The iterator is positioned between elements A and C. If we called set at this point, we would get an illegal state exception. If we called remove, we would also get an illegal state exception. A call to previous would still be expected to return A, and a call to next would still be expected to return C. Calling add E inserts new element E in front of the iterator's current position. So E is between elements A and C, but also still in front of the iterator's position. C is still the next element after the iterator. A call to set or remove would be expected to throw an illegal state exception at this point. A call to previous would now return the new element E, and a call to next would still return C. Like a basic iterator, a list iterator is expected to reliably represent the current contents of a list, and it is expected to fail fast by throwing a concurrent modification exception if any change occurs to the list that didn't involve the list iterator's own modification methods. As soon as a list iterator detects that some unknown change has taken place, calling any of the list iterator methods should result in a concurrent modification exception.